Hey guys, it's Kirsten. Um, so I'm back with a video finally. I know we haven't filmed one in a while since our hundredth video, but it's been really difficult since Kelsey now lives somewhere else where she goes to college and I'm still at the ballet school, so that's difficult. But I'm finally filming a video, yay! Okay, so today I'm going to talk about how to deal with a knee injury, and this is something I unfortunately have a lot of experience with. I've had knee problems off and on for five years, I think. Yeah, about five years. I have dislocated my right kneecap three times. I've damaged almost every single joint in my knee. You're gonna think I'm crazy and you're probably cringing right now that I'm still dancing, but I'm okay. I'm, I'm doing well now. Um, but I've torn my ACL. It was a minor tear, so it was basically a, a sprain or strain, like a first degree strain. Um, and I've torn my meniscus, I've torn my patellar tendon, I have damaged a whole lot of things in there, and now I have Hoffa's disease, which is um, inflammation of, and sometimes tearing of the Hoffa's fat pad, which is the cushion under your kneecap. Um, but I'd like to start off this video saying that I am not any sort of healthcare professional and I don't want you to take my advice as like the golden rules and say, I don't want to say that you have to do this stuff. I definitely advise seeking professional care before you uh, go uh, start treating yourself or take drastic measures to heal your knee. Um, so yes. But hopefully you find this stuff helpful because over the long years I've had all these problems. I've learned quite a few tricks that help keep my knee healthy or when it's not feeling so good, it makes it feel well enough to dance. Um, so, first things first, um, I would advise if you're feeling some pain, if it's minimal pain, Maybe test it out for just two or three days. If it starts getting worse, you definitely need to see a healthcare professional about it. I wouldn't advise necessarily going straight to the doctor, like your pediatrician or something, or whatever, your normal doctor, because normally they can't really do anything, at least in my experience. All they do is kind of check it out, give you their best guess as to what's going on, but basically say you really need to just get an MRI or an x-ray. Usually in the case of knees, you have to get an MRI. I've gotten several, and I know they're very expensive, but if your knee injury is getting serious and you're feeling a lot of pain, I think it's incredibly important to just get an MRI and find out what is really going on so that you have the proof of what the injury actually is and so that you could tell whoever you're seeking care from what the problem is so they can treat it. Because really, no one can know exactly what the problem is and how bad it is unless you get the MRI usually. The, um, normally, if you go to a chiropractor or just anyone like that, they could do some tests to your knee and say, kind of move around your kneecap and say, does this hurt, does this hurt, pinch it here, touch it there, and just kind of get a guess for what it is, but you really need to know exactly what's going on. In the past, I've put off getting an MRI because I just didn't want to do it and it's expensive and I didn't really want to ask my parents to spend that kind of money when I thought I could just deal with it. But in the end, when I finally just did it, I was so happy I did because I had no idea the problems that were going on and me and my, um, my physical therapist that I go to now were actually really surprised with the results and now that we know what it is, we've been able, or my doctor has been able to treat it much better and it's, things are going well now. So I would advise don't put off the pain, don't put off seeing someone about it because usually with knee injuries they only get worse and they are normally reoccurring, which is really unfortunate. Um, the knee is one of the most complicated joints in the body and I hate to sound pessimistic, but there's so much that can go wrong with it, I know. Uh, I mean, I just listed off all my injuries to you just in one knee, just in one small area of the body. A lot can go wrong, so you really want to make sure that you take care of it. Um, I'd also like to mention some tips on how to prevent knee injuries because that's really important, especially if you want to be a professional dancer or even if you just want to dance recreationally for a long time. Um, it's really important to have proper body mechanics, as in 
don't force your turnout. That means you're trying to, just, let's say, squeeze your feet into 180 degree first position. And most people are not made to do that. It's just not a natural thing. Some people can do that perfectly turned out from the hip and their knees can be perfectly aligned with their toes whenever they go into a plie. And that's ideally what it should be. But um, it doesn't, I would like to also give a piece of advice that um, directors and companies and just people you're trying to impress aren't necessarily looking for a 180 degree turnout. Some are, it's a very, it, usually in the Russian style, they really look for that because that's, they think that's kind of the only way. I'm not going to speak ger generally for all of the Russian teachers out there. Please excuse me if you don't think the same way, but in my experience, that's usually how it is. The Russian teachers think you should be all the way turned out. But most people these days are realizing how that's really not meant for everyone and it causes a lot of injuries and it really shortens careers. So you really need to focus when you're pleading on having your knee in line with your toes. Your knee should not be forward, like pushed over your foot. That's really, really dangerous and that's how I've dislocated my kneecap because I used to force my turnout all the time. I was really self-conscious about it because I wanted so badly I still want to be a professional dancer. I'm, I was trying so hard, and I thought the only way to impress people was if I was flat turned out, and I was not born very turned out. So it's just not possible for me to stay healthy and not injure myself while maintaining that kind of turnout. Not to mention, uh, you can't really gain the right kind of strength when you're forcing your turnout. You're not going to be stable on your legs in the center because you can't maintain that turnout without um, gripping the bar. And yeah, it's just all around really not good because when you go auditioning for companies um, or if you're trying to impress a teacher or something, they could see right through that. They know that you're forcing your turnout and you're really not hiding anything because most people at least the ones who know what they're talking about, are looking at your knees to see how turned out they are from the hip. Um, because if your knees are pointing forward and your feet oops, sorry, <laughs> are pointing um, to the side, it just doesn't match up. And it's just very, very bad for your knees and for your feet. You could get stress fractures from rolling over your arches and forcing your turnout. So really, just don't go there. Just please don't go there. Don't feel like you need to have 180 degree turnout to be a beautiful dancer because you don't honestly and today more and more people are recognizing that and once you really find the turnout from the hip and you get strength the proper way and you can maintain that turnout you have at bar in the center that's when your technique will be strong enough to have lots of artistry on top and just I mean on in your upper body and just really have a lot less tension than you would have if you're gripping all your muscles to maintain your turnout. So anyway, that was a long tangent, sorry, but I hope that was helpful um, because I got all those knee injuries from forcing my turnout. And I just want people to know that you really don't have to do that. And people these days much more appreciate strong dancers that are maybe slightly more turned in than the ones who are really tense and really just so forced because all they're focused on is how turned out they are. And um, most of the time the audience really doesn't care if your foot is flat turned out. They, they're they looking at the upper body and how uh, your performance quality is and things like that. So anyway, hope that helps because that's really a big deal with knee injuries. Most of them come from things like that. Um, so that's how to like prevent a knee injury and also stay healthy. You need to start working that way. If you already have a knee injury, that's how you'll get better again. And that's how you'll keep better. So anyway, um, I don't know why I think I already showed this, but I don't think I did. Okay. Anyway, things that I do to kind of help out my knee whenever I'm on my own or I can't uh, make a physical therapy appointment um, that often and just basically to keep my knee pain free while it's still kind of injured. Um, I use this um, kind of 
cream. It's called Traumiel. It's kind of like a pain relief cream. It also comes in gel form, but I find that the cream is more effective, or it's more potent, I guess. It, it's the one that comes with the red cap, and it has, the packaging looks like this. Um, I don't know if it's going to flip that on my camera. You know how sometimes the cameras like do the mirror image thing or whatever it is? Yeah, so I hope you could read that. It's just a homeopathic ointment. It says on the back, um, uses for temporary relief of muscle pain, joint pain, sports injuries, and bruising. And um, I've heard it could also help with inflammation. So all around, I think it's helpful. And you could rub this pretty much anywhere. I mean, obviously not on your face. We're like, don't eat it, don't rub it in your eyes. Um, or on your hair, because that would be gross. But if you have anything that's hurting, any muscle soreness, pain, just, you could, I rub this on my calves, on my feet, on my knees, anywhere really, um, on my legs. I don't put it anywhere other than my legs, but anyway, <laughs> I think, I think you would assume that too. Um, so you could get, I get this from my physical therapist, but, um, I'm sure you could find it on Amazon. I'm not sure what stores you could find it in, because I haven't gotten it from a store, but I'm sure, like, Maybe a runner's supply store or like sports stores would probably have it. But um, if all else fails, Amazon I'm sure has it. Also, um, since I told you I have Hoffa's disease, which means my Hoffa's fat pad is extremely inflamed all the time. Basically, it's like chronic swelling for me. My knee has been swollen for at least eight or nine months straight. And no amount of icing will make it go down. It's really frustrating and painful and the fact that often my right knee looks like a softball and my left one looks normal is really aggravating um, because sometimes the inflammation is so bad that it gets hard and my kneecap doesn't track properly as in it doesn't go in a straight line and mine doesn't anyway because my knee is naturally kind of messed up and I have patella alta which means that my kneecap sits higher on my knee than where it should be it doesn't sit in its natural groove which doesn't help either so basically my knees are just a big mess right now um, but anyway so I use this knee pad or knee brace knee brace. I don't know why I'm calling it a knee pad all of a sudden because it's definitely not a pad. It's not padded. Um, it's just a brace. Just purely for um, a little bit of compression. It, as you can see, it's really nothing too intense and I've worn this for years unfortunately. Um, yeah, so it's pretty beat up. It's just an ace bandage thing. I just turned it inside out because this red thing kind of annoys me. Um, so yeah, I just wear that and it doesn't restrict my knee at all. I could do everything in it. And also I've worn it a lot, so it's kind of loose. But it um, kind of stabilizes my kneecap. And it also helps with swelling. It helps it not to get too out of control. And that's really a big deal for me. I always need to make sure that I have that inflammation under control because that's part of my condition. That's, that's what makes it painful when I let it get inflamed. And I don't ice regularly. I don't take care of it. I do too much. I overwork it that's when it gets painful and more swollen and more inflamed. So that's what I do. I would recommend picking yourself up a little knee brace like this. Um, Cause actually back in the day when I dislocated my kneecap the first time, I had one of those massive black braces with um, that went like above and below the knee by quite a bit. And then it had like metal things on the sides. So every time I bent and bent, bent straightened my oh my gosh I can't speak English today please forgive me um every time I moved my knee around I'd be like <laughs> and I'd be like trying to dance in it that was just a terrible idea because it was way too stiff and way too much so I find that at least when I'm dancing this is the way to go if um my knee just isn't feeling a hundred percent that's I just put this on and it also helps me worry less about it because um, also a huge deal with my injury, I found that when I get really worried and stressed out about it, that's when it's worse because number one, I'm more aware of any pain that I might have and I stress, on top of that, stress is terrible for injuries. It can slow down the healing process of your body if you're too stressed out to sleep or do your normal activities or just 
Um, stress can really affect your health, so I would just recommend just try it at your best to stay calm about it. I know that's really, really hard, but if you just kind of let it roll off your shoulder and if you know there's nothing you could really do about it and you're doing all you can to treat what's happening and you really have to dance, just try not to worry because stressing out about it only makes it worse. Um, also, the obvious thing is icing and elevating it. Rice, like, you know, um, rest, ice, compression, elevation. I think that's rice, the little acronym. Anyway, so um, every night before I go to sleep, I ice for 30 minutes, and uh, I do it on both my knees just to keep them both healthy because sometimes my left one acts up just pu purely because of... Um, compensation because sometimes when one body part is in pain you'll naturally compensate on the other side and um, so sometimes my left knee bothers me so I just ice them both and also a really cool tip that my PT gave to me was to start icing my lower back this is really weird because I really don't have back problems at all my lower back doesn't hurt and I don't have alignment problems either um, usually my back is really good about staying healthy and just keeping in alignment but I started doing that and something about the nerves in my lower back and I don't know something about icing my lower back helped with my lower legs because uh, I think a lot of the nerves and whatever it goes on there he's really knowledgeable about all that stuff I'm not I just kind of followed what he said and he told me something about why to do it but anyway I started icing my lower back at the same time I'm icing my knees and my knees started feeling so much better. It was the weirdest thing. Um, so if you're seeing a physical therapist or a chiropractor or someone like that, ask them about it and see if they think that would help. And, or maybe just try it once or twice. I don't really don't think it could hurt to just start icing your lower back if your lower legs are hurting, um, like from the knee down. I think it could be beneficial. So just try it out. It's a really cool tip that has really helped me. So I ice for 30 minutes a night. Um, I wish I could do it more, but that's just kind of all I have time for because I'm like doing other things, cooking dinner, doing like cleaning my apartment, and then I go to sleep. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. And icing helps a lot. Um, oh, I take joint supplements. Like I'll take krill oil, which is kind of like a more concentrated form of fish oil, so I've heard. So basically you just have to take one tiny pill instead of like two big fish oil pills. So I take that. And for my inflammation, I've started taking Boswellia, which is an herb supplement that helps a lot with inflammation, and I found that really helped. Um, I ran out of it, so I'll be getting more, but I started to notice a difference after I stopped taking it, and I take um, two a day. So also, if you're interested and you have a lot of inflammation like me, and it's painful, I would advise asking your healthcare professional person about Boswellia as a supplement, because I think it's really good stuff. Um, and just keep up with your vitamins in general because um, just maintaining overall health is really important in helping the healing process of your knees or any other injury for that matter. Um, I feel like I've been talking for like 20,000 years. I'm so not used to making a video now. How sad is that? I'm sorry. I'm going to try and make more videos regularly and Kelsey will probably make a guest appearance in there um, here and there. So. But to make it clear, it's still our channel together. I'm just able to make videos more often because I have the camera with me. And um, when she visits, we'll try and make more videos together. But um, I feel like I'm leaving things out. Uh, oh, I am. A big one. Okay. So before this video turns like 30 minutes long, I just have to quickly mention that... Um, Taking an anti-inflammatory or just a pain pill like ibuprofen or Aleve or something like that um, can be helpful if you're really in a pinch and you have to dance, like if there's a performance you have to get through or auditions or something like that. Um, it's okay to take pain supplements I, or um, things like that. I know some people are really against it. I used to be very anti-pain pill because my sister... Uh, had some bad injuries and she got a stomach ulcer from taking like four ibuprofen a day which is really not recommended. I know that you could take a lot more than that and still be okay but it's not good to take that much over a long period of time. 
Unfortunately, due to my schedule and all the things I've had to do this year, I really haven't been able to take off time to let my knee heal and I've had to resort to taking a lot of pain pills. And I really wish I didn't have to and um, I, I wish I could just dance without having to take two ibuprofen to do technique class. That, I mean, I really hate that. But uh, you have to do what you have to do. So if something's really hurting you, it's okay to take some ibuprofen or something like that. That's what I take. Um, just to get through something, but try not to rely on that or be dependent on it because I'm kind of going through that right now. I've become dependent on it to take class, which is terrible. And I'm planning on taking a lot of time off in the summer before I go to a summer intensive to let my knee heal. But anyway, I just wanted to touch on that. And um, yeah, so it's okay to take pain supplements if you have to, but try not to do it for extended periods of time and try not to take too many. If But if it's that bad, you have to do it. But anyway, I see my battery's dying. So I'm going to end this video now. I know it's like 20,000 years long. I'm sorry, but I'm really excited to make a video again. And I really hope this helped y'all. And um, good luck to all of you with knee injuries. My heart really goes out to you. I know it's a very difficult thing to deal with. So anyway, bye.